softening of water can be carried out by two major process one is external conditioning just now we have discussed the second one is internal conditioning in external conditioning we added or we purified the water before it is fed into the boiler but in internal the raw water is simply fed into the boiler and into the boiler we are adding some chemicals which is removing the scale forming substances that's a major difference so there in external conditioning the water which is fed into the furnace is already softened externally so it is purified then fed into the furnace whereas here in internal conditioning the raw water hard water is fed into the furnace besides we are adding some chemicals which are removing the scale forming substances and the substances which are added to remove the scale forming substance may be carbonate or phosphate or calcon any one of these three is added into the boiler to remove the scale forming substances so these substances when added into the boiler which are removing the scale forming compounds as a sludge or as a water soluble complex as the case may be now let us go to the first one carbonate conditioning name itself specifying carbonate so in this we are adding sodium carbonate into the boiler water so that sodium carbonate reacting with scale forming compounds like calcium sulfate and removing removed that scale forming compound calcium carbonate is removed as calcium carbonate by sodium carbonate so the sodium carbonate which we added into the boiler water is removing the scale forming calcium sulfate into calcium carbonate precipitate so that calcium carbonate since it is water insoluble it can be readily removed so removal of calcium carbonate is not at all a problem it can be removed readily because it is a water insoluble compound precipitate so in carbonate conditioning we are adding sodium carbonate and here this is mainly applicable for low pressure boiler this cannot be used for high pressure boiler because in high pressure boiler the sodium carbonate will undergo hydrolysis to give sodium hydroxide which leads to some caustic embrittlement so this is not applicable for high pressure boiler this is applicable only for low pressure boiler which is removing that scale forming compound as calcium carbonate precipitate it can be removed easily and the second one is phosphate conditioning it is applicable for both low pressure as well as high pressure boiler we are adding sodium phosphate in the place of sodium carbonate that's all so that sodium phosphate as our sodium carbonate combines with calcium sulfate to form calcium carbonate precipitate here this calcium sulfate scale forming compound present in hot water is reacting with sodium phosphate forming water insoluble calcium phosphate sludge so the sludge can be readily removed so the hardness causing calcium sulfate is removed as sludge that is calcium phosphate it is removed and the sludge is soft that means only when it is soft it can be obtained as a sludge in case if it is hard precipitate that will form a scale removal will be a problem so this precipitate calcium and magnesium phosphate is a soft precipitate soft sludge it can be readily removed by filtration and besides the sodium phosphate we have two more substances sodium phosphate 
which we used here it is 2 alkaline and sodium hydrogen phosphate weakly alkaline and disodium hydrogen uh, sodium dihydrogen phosphate sodium phosphate disodium hydrogen phosphate sodium dihydrogen phosphate any one of these three can be added according to the nature of the water if the water is too much acidic then we have to prefer the alkaline phosphate compound sodium phosphate in case of water is weakly acidic then we have to prefer this weakly alkaline disodium hydrogen phosphate if water is alkaline then we have to prefer that acidic sodium dihydrogen phosphate so according to the nature of the water we can prefer the phosphate that is advantage of this technique the third one is calcon conditioning here we are adding the internal conditioning agent as sodium hexa meta phosphate na2 it is a complex coordination complex na4 po3 six times sodium hexa meta phosphate when this is added into hot water the sodium hexa meta phosphate interacts with hardness causing ca2 plus ion and forming highly water soluble complex water soluble complex we are getting a water soluble complex unlike previous methods in previous methods we got precipitate water insoluble compounds we got sludge whereas here we are getting highly water soluble complex so this is that complex our sodium hexa meta phosphate interacting with the ca2 plus of calcium sulfate forming this na2 ca2 po3 six times so this complex is highly soluble in water so there is there is no sludge removal problem that is advantage of this because to remove the sludge we have to spend money here there is no sludge so there is no sludge disposal or removal problem that is the advantage of this technique so these are the three methods we have under internal conditioning and according to the nature of the water according to our requirement we can prefer any one of these three conditioning internal conditioning for boiler water so we have seen so many methods for, for the purification of water like ionic change resin and the internal conditioning external conditioning here we have yet another method for getting pure water this is called as desalination of brackish water what do you mean by desalination it is very simple removal of common salt from water is called as desalination process of removing common salt from water is called desalination and what do you mean by brackish water so water containing dissolved salts with a peculiar taste or brackish taste is called brackish water and of course it contains mainly common salt we have so many methods for desalination the best and wonderful technique we have is reverse osmosis so everyone might be familiar with the term osmosis osmosis we know earlier osmosis is nothing but when two solutions of different concentrations one is lower concentration another one is higher concentration when these two are separated by a semi permeable membrane the solvent molecules moving from lower concentration to higher lower to higher lower concentration to higher 
is called as osmosis when two solutions of different concentrations are separated by a semi permeable membrane the solvent molecules diffuses from lower concentration to higher concentration through the semi permeable membrane is called as osmosis so that we are familiar osmosis is nothing but diffusion of solvent molecule from lower to higher through a semi permeable membrane that membrane may be like your cellulose acetate cellulose butyrate like that we have so many synthetic as well as natural membranes so that membrane will allow only the solvent molecules to pass through will never allow the solute molecules to pass through so this is called semi permeable membrane and everyone is clear with this term osmosis whereas here we are going for a thing called the reverse osmosis it is called as ro commonly called as ro reverse osmosis in reverse osmosis the osmosis is reversed here the solvent molecules are diffusing from higher to lower but not spontaneously so osmosis is spontaneous when two solutions of different concentrations are separated by the membrane the solvent molecules from lower concentration diffuses through the membrane to higher concentration spontaneously without any inducement it diffuses through the membrane but in reverse osmosis we are having the same membrane two solutions of different concentration if you are keeping so only solvent from lower will move to higher but here we don't want to watch or to practice osmosis we want to have reverse osmosis that is we want the solvent molecules to diffuse from higher to lower so here in this setup we have taken the membrane here semi permeable membrane and this side we have saline water and this side we have fresh water what will happen when saline water saline water is having salt in it fresh water is not having any salt in it the solvent molecule from fresh water enters into saline water through the membrane that is our regular osmosis but here in the setup i have a piston on higher concentrated side i am applying some pressure that pressure that hydrostatic pressure which i am applying is more than a pressure called osmotic pressure so osmotic pressure is nothing but the pressure which is just required to prevent osmosis without this piston assume the diagram without this piston if there is no piston there is no pressure solvent molecule from fresh water diffuses through the membrane to the saline water i don't want i don't want to watch osmosis so i want to prevent osmosis so what i am doing is i am applying some pressure on the higher concentrated side so that the entry of solvent molecule is prevented so that pressure which is just enough to prevent osmosis is called osmotic pressure now i am applying some pressure more than osmotic pressure see if i am applying pressure equal to osmotic pressure there won't be any movement on any side whereas here i am applying pressure on the higher concentrated side which is more than osmotic pressure since the pressure is more than osmotic pressure the solvent molecule pure water molecule diffuses from saline water side to fresh water side this is reverse osmosis so the direction of ro reverse osmosis so when you are applying some pressure which is more than the osmotic pressure on the higher concentrated side 
the solvent molecule diffuses from higher to lower that is called a reverse osmosis so we are getting pure water so mostly by this technique only the drinking water that is bottled drinking water is made most of the mostly they are make you making use of this reverse osmosis they are and the water we are getting is free from ionic impurities colloidal impurities because the pore size is too small it can never allow even the ionic impurities pass through then collides are bigger than ionic so it can never pass through so we are getting very pure water and above all the life of the membrane is good life of the membrane is very high and once it is used the membrane can be replaced within no time it can be replaced it is available readily and it can be fitted readily so there won't be any disruption for our work and when you come in, when you are coming to the capital it is low capital and running cost is again very very low so it is very good technique to get pure water so this technique is used to get drinking water from sea water for our use